In recent years, China has faced increasing opposition regarding its strict and ineffective zero COVID policies. Demonstrators have carried out protests all over China in hopes of pressuring the Chinese Communist Party into reform, many of whom are being arrested and or vilified by the very government they hope to change. These protests are some of the greatest acts of defiance the CCP has witnessed in decades. And as the Chinese government finally lessens COVID policies, China's president Xi Jinping's grasp on the party remains uncertain. But what is zero COVID? Why is China's leadership until recently insisted on it? And how are we as a school recognizing the conflict? Zero COVID, or dynamic zero COVID, focuses on eradicating the virus completely from China. The communist regime uses strict lockdowns, isolation, and mass testing in areas of potential outbreak. This method is so strict that cities housing millions have been locked down due to a handful of reported cases. This has affected citizens' access to food, medical care, and other essentials while also preventing citizens from leaving heavily popul populated buildings, such as apartments during natural disasters. A particular incident involving an apartment fire in Urumqi, the capital of Xinjiang region in northwest China, caused 10 casualties. Many believe the perpetrator to be China's own zero-COVID policies, preventing victims of the fire from escaping and help from arriving. Authorities deny zero COVID as a factor. In the wake of zero COVID controversy, criticism reached of President Xi Jinping on an unprecedented scale. Many are requesting for his voluntary removal from office. Regardless, Xi Jinping bunkered down on COVID zero until recently, as he continued to defend the approach by emphasizing the low COVID related death tally in China. However, the country's official figures have come under question for their accuracy as they hold a total of 5,200 COVID-related deaths, a generously low statistic given China's high population of 1.4 billion. Furthermore, the country has poor vaccination rates and the shots provided uh, are massively ineffective in treating COVID. It's, like, it's likely this fact, as well as the recent uproar and protest, swayed Xi Jinping towards lessening restrictions in hopes of appeasing the uh, disgruntled populace, and stating new COVID policies that will limit quarantine and lockdown frequency, as well as ease up on mass testing. But how do I know all of this? It's apparent most of our population is negligent to foreign affairs, and for this reason, Mr. McCriskey, in order to make information more accessible, teaches modern Asian history. With project-based learning, students of Mr. McChristie's course conduct independent research that exposes both the independent student and his peers to current foreign affairs. Information is conveyed through forms of media such as video, presentations, or poster boards. But what do students think of the class? This class from any other? Um, honestly, it's kind of how we learn. Um, I think his class kind of is different from every other class in that he kind of gives us the freedom to learn what we want to learn. I would say Mr. McChristie's class is different because you kind of get to go into your own research. Um, and I think basically everyone's kind of working together, but you have different separate projects and that kind of all ties into each other. Mr. McChristie's class, it, it differs because you, yourself the student, are doing the research um, and you're learning on your own while he, he sort of guides you 